Suddenly, your world changes. You're in a place you never imagined. You don't feel like yourself anymore. You feel alone, but you're not. Other people with spinal cord injuries know exactly what you're going through because they've been there themselves. They're the voices of experience, and they can help you get through this. Here's what they remember as the hardest part of their first days in the hospital. Maybe you're going through some of the same things. The hardest part was just being disoriented, not knowing where I was. They had me on a tilt table where the table was just turning back and forth, uh, keeping you from getting a pressure sore. But at that time, I didn't realize it, so I'm tilting back and forth. I'm waking up, coming up out of uh, the medication, you know, the sedation. And I'm, I'm not knowing where I'm at, what's going on. So at first, that was like an initial shock to me. I didn't understand what was going on. So that was the, the hardest part to me. I think for me, the first days in the hospital were more physically challenging than anything else. I just remember being exhausted and really overwhelmed. And I remember falling asleep and waking up and not remembering where I was or who was around. And I think it was too early on for me to be challenged mentally by the idea of what all this was going to mean. I was just more trying to get through what was going on then and maybe looking to the very immediate future. I wasn't a real good patient sometimes. I, I, could, be very, um, um, I could be very cranky. I could get very upset at little things despite um, you know the medication that you're on after the injury, both painkillers as well as as well as um, 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 muscle relaxants, Valium, things like that, which which are useful to calm you down so that you don't uh, completely freak out. Um, but I still I would still get very upset very easily and very quickly. You'd look at yourself in the mirror and you'd see somebody there that you don't really recognize. I'd say the hardest part was not knowing my injury. I mean, first of all, I had no idea what being paralyzed was. I mean, I've heard about it, but I didn't really understand it. The hardest part was just not knowing because nobody would talk to me. You know, I just remember the doctors passing by and just saying my diagnosis. They were like, T11, AJ, complete, but nobody would explain that to me. So I didn't know what was going on. And when I was finally told, you know, the doctor was just very blunt. I asked him, hey doctor, I, I can't feel my legs, you know, when's the feeling going to come back? When am I going to walk out of this hospital? And he was just very nonchalant, well, you're never going to walk again. You know, instantly, you know, my world was shattered. I could not believe that this was me. I had a very, very difficult time coming to grips with the person that I was becoming. The hardest parts of the first days in the hospital were um, getting used to the fact that I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life because I got shot one day and the next day the doctor came in and told me you're probably going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life I'm sorry and he was gone well for me it was like accepting that I was going to be in a wheelchair for life I couldn't accept it for a while. They put the wheelchair next to my bed. I would not even look at it. I didn't want to get on it. They had to forcefully put me in the chair. It took two nurses to get me up and put me in the chair. Because I'm like, I couldn't accept not walking again. So the hardest part was the um, not being able to do things independently. Um, I was 15 years old and was just starting to get a taste of independence. I'd always been a really independent person and child. Um, and so to go from being able to do everything yourself to needing help with everything, even eating, um, was definitely difficult. The hardest thing to imagine is that you're ever going to be able to put your life back together. You know, initially, it's almost unfathomable that you're ever going to have a life. You know, eventually it gets there, but it takes, I think, a long time. And, and that 
at first is, is a very overwhelming feeling because it happens, you know, it's not like you're born with it. It's not like it's a degenerative condition. It's <laughs> one minute you can walk and the next minute you can't. For me, it was really kind of trying to grasp what was going on and also, you know, find out that I have a spinal cord injury, I have permanent disability, you know, never gonna walk again is really trying to come to the grasp of what am I gonna do next? What's what's gonna happen here? Because I'm 17, still in high school. It's, it was it was hard to really grasp the the, net, the concept of spinal cord injury, especially here in, you know, you broke your neck and be, you know, on a feeding tube or for the rest of my life, have a trach in my, my neck for the rest of my life. It was really kind of coming to grasp of, of what that all means. I think the hardest part of being hospitalized was the first time um, I think my son saw me. My son was six at the time and you know he was a mama's boy and I think my daughter who was eight was much more stoic when they when she first saw me. She, she's still very quiet about those things but my son so wanted to like push me and was just so glad to see me. But then after a little while he got tired and he wanted me to hold him. That was very hard for me. That was very hard for me. To be able to, you know, do one of those and say, hey, you can sit on my lap and we can roll together. Being able to like shift on a dime so that he knew that I loved him still with all my heart. That was hard. Yeah. Started off as being 100% dependent to now being 100% independent. Um, I've gone from taking one class a semester to at the time I was finished up school, being, you know, having a, a full schedule and doing an internship and now having a full-time job. Um, you know, not being in a relationship when I was first injured to, you know, now being married um, and working on having children. I think the milestone was when, uh, when a gentleman that had been in a wheelchair actually well, came into my room and he just started talking to me. And, you know, and I got to ask him about a hundred questions like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And just seeing that, you know, that, you know, life really doesn't stop for a disability. And just seeing that made me think that, like, if he can do it, then I can most definitely do it. The chair is part of my body now. I don't even consider it. Like, I don't even, like, think I'm in a wheelchair. It's, like, normal. There are certain things that I no longer miss. <laughs> um, at first, there were things that I thought I would never get over. Um, that I would never be able to go surfing <laughs> and that I would miss the sand between my toes and you know those sorts of things like uh, initially you know were, were overwhelming that that I would never do certain things or never be able to feel certain things um, and then I caught myself the other day having a hard time remembering even what it felt like before I'd been disabled so uh, you know, I, it, that doesn't even bother me anymore. I don't think about those things. I feel like I can do just about anything I want to do. So it doesn't, it's not nearly as big of a deal as I always thought it would be. Voices of experience. They know. They've lived it. For more videos on living with spinal cord injury, visit facingdisability.com.